I'm gonna go deeper into the Gospel of Thomas right now, and if you didn't check out my first video on the subject, check it out. Before I get into it, I wanna let you know that if you sign up for the mailing list by clicking the link in the box below, you'll get a free 20-minute consultation with me. So all you need to do is enter your info and you will receive an email with a link to schedule. So I look forward to hearing from you. As I said in my last video, the Gnostic Gospel of Thomas is not religion as usual. It is not a dogma. It is not a set of instructions on how you're supposed to behave in order to get into heaven. It's not telling you what the world is or where it came from and, and all of that. It's simply a set of instructions to wake up. Again and again throughout this book, Jesus is just saying, hey, just look around and see. So one of my favorite passages, it's just the third one in the book where he says, if your leaders say to you, look, the kingdom is in heaven, then the birds will precede you. If they say, look, it's in the sea, then the fish will precede you. Rather, the kingdom is inside you and outside you. When you know yourselves, then you will be known and you will know that you are children of the living Father. But if you do not know yourselves, then you live in poverty and you are poverty. So let's, let's break this apart a little bit. Okay, looking for the kingdom of heaven. Obviously, we can relate this to religion, right? Orthodox religion with all the dogmas, okay? Uh, I, I wanna go to heaven, so I gotta be good. I gotta follow the 10 commandments. I gotta go to church on Sunday. I gotta, you know, whatever. And each different religion has its own set of instructions on what you gotta do to, to get it right. But it doesn't stop at religion, right? It can apply to any ism, right? Atheism. We can look for it in, in science, in, in the philosophy of materialism, and the, the idea that, that this is how the world works. I know how the world works, damn it, and you know anything that doesn't fit with this, I'm not gonna let it in, right? Um, it, it could have to do with our, our views on social justice, our views on our personal identity and nationalism and all sorts of stuff, right? It can apply to any ism, any philosophy, any religion. But even if we strip that away, it can get more subtle. Just those basic ideas that we have about ourselves and what's real, right? Any story that we tell, in a way, it's like we're looking for the answer in it. And to the extent that we do that, we collapse our reality down and we, we shut ourselves off from the fullness of existence. And it's the fullness of existence that we're after. Okay, and this is what he means when he says, if you do not know yourselves, then you live in poverty, right? We're, we're cutting ourselves off from all of that. And not just cutting ourselves off from all of that, but we're becoming small in the process. That's why he says, then you are poverty. So to know yourself is to know yourself as a, a, just a spark of existence itself, along with everything else. So can you become nothing, right? Can you let go of all of the stories, everything you think you are, everything you think is so important? Can you just become nothing and so become everything? That is what Gnosis is about, okay? So, you know, it, this is a hard one to convey if you haven't had the experience, the idea that there is a kind of knowledge out there that goes so far beyond all other forms of knowledge that when you experience it, it's like, I don't need, I don't need any answers to everything because I've already experienced everything. Like, it doesn't give you answers, this kind of knowledge. It's not like, okay, now that I've experienced it all, like, whew, whew, finally I can rest easy, ah, I know. No, it's, it's different. It's like, I know, but I'm also like, what the hell is this? It's an even bigger mystery, right? So, yeah, anybody who thinks that, that this sort of spirituality is just looking for easy answers, it's like, you set out on a path like this, you know, you, you might just find what you're looking for and realize that it's a whole different thing entirely, but it's beautiful. So, I encourage you, 
you know, keep watching these videos and allow, just allow these, these, uh, these sayings to sink in with you, right? Jesus says several times throughout this book, those with ears, let them listen, or, you know, you know, for those who have ears, let them hear, right? Basically, you gotta listen with the right kind of ears to this. Lay everything else aside. And if you allow it through, you might just start to see things a little bit differently. So try this, you know? As you go around in your daily life, try to see the divinity in everything. Don't think about divinity as any kind of idea, okay? Any kind of, any way that it's been described, but just, just as existence, as this kind of essential quality of existence that everything shares in, right? Everything is, right? And so you just see it there, just, mm, okay, that is there. I'm here. Are we really so different? Is there any separation? And just breathe all things into you. And as you breathe out, just let go of yourself entirely. You just breathe it all in. And let go of yourself entirely. I am everything. I am nothing. I am everything. I am nothing.